Welcome back. We're going to look today at the politics and economics of Mesopotamia, and so we're going to jump right on in, okay? So politics, when we talk about politics, we're talking about government. Specifically with the government, we're talking about how the government was set up, how things were ruled. We're going to look specifically today at the city-state. So the Mesopot in Mesopotamia, the civilization here was set up into city-states, so city hyphen states, it's a compound word, um, which included the city and the area that it controlled. Okay, so it's very different than what we have today. Today we have a city inside of a state inside of a country, okay? Um, and then, so this is kind of different. It combines the city and the state into one thing. Um, so each city-state had its own leader, had its own money system, had its own um, religious, like, gods and goddesses that it worshipped. And sometimes the city-states would kind of go to war with each other. They didn't work together like the states that we have today, like Ohio and Indiana worked together to do different things. Um, it was not that way in Mesopotamia. They were very different. So the city-state was organized this way. So if you look at this picture down here, we have the city-state, which is this main part that's surrounded by this wall. And then you have all these kind of villages and stuff, or these like um, houses and stuff that were outside. And that would have all been part of the city-state. Now, looking at the city-state, the city-state faced three main challenges. There were lots of challenges that it faced, but we're going to look at three of them specifically. We're talking about challenges here. So we're going to talk about, um, first, the threat of invaders. That was kind of the main worry that these city-states had, this main issue that it faced, this main challenge. Because people could come in and just conquer the city-state. So in order to keep the city, the invaders out, a city-state would build walls around the outside of the city-state. They'd build these really high, tall walls, strong walls that would keep out invaders. Um, you would have soldiers kind of stationed along the top of them, kind of make sure they're watching. You'd have soldiers at the gates as a way of protecting the city-state, or at least the main part of the city-state. Now, the outside were like, if you look at that picture earlier, where like the houses and stuff were on the outside of the city-state, those didn't have a wall around them. They were kind of there. Um, they weren't as protected as if you lived in the main city. Um, but in order to keep the threat of invaders at bay, these invaders, people coming in, they had to build these tall walls like this. So looking at this picture, we have these tall walls along the outside of the city-state. We'd have our main ziggurat there in the middle. Um, and then along this outside here, we have the different homes. Now, those weren't protected with the walls, but they were still protected within the city-state. Another threat that city-states would face would be lack of water. Okay, If you think about it, um, especially in southern Mesopotamia, where we're near the equator, where it's hot, there's not a lot of water around except for the rivers. So... And not every city-state can be right on a river. They can maybe have to be kind of a ways from it. So in order to get water there, they'd have irrigation systems. These kind of canals that would be built that would bring water into the city. Um, it may let the city have water for um, just kind of like everyday living. Um, you could bring trade goods in and have them sent out on the river there, that irrigation canal. You could have travelers come in, sometimes invaders, I guess, too. So like this, this picture is kind of blurry right now. Um, but here we have the city-state. You see this, these big walls around the city-state. There's even a second set of walls here. But then we have this canal that came off of the river and cut right through the middle of the city-state and then connected to the outside of the river again. That way they could still be part of the river. They could travel up and down the river as they needed to to get those supplies through, to get people through, just to get water. Um, the city-state would run that way with the water. The last main threat that they faced was the challenge of trade. Okay, how are we going to get what we need in the city-state? Not, we don't have everything that we need. I mean, us here in the United States don't have everything we need right here in the U.S. We have to trade with other countries in order to get what we need. So, in Mesopotamia, they relied on a barter system, which we'll talk about the barter system here in just a few minutes, but relied on this, this barter system to get what they needed. Now, trading is not a super easy job. Uh, trading meant that you were traveling away from your home, long miles. There's no cars. They're not riding horses. 
Uh, there's no airplanes. Sometimes they could use a boat, but not always. So they're walking on foot with their donkey, and then later in the civilization, they might have had a cart. But they're walking, and so it's a dangerous job because you could run into bandits. Group of peoples, and there were people who would, their professional professional job was to be a bandit. They would stay on these trade routes, and they'd rob the trade routes. And then they'd sell what they had or, or what they gathered, or they'd just keep it. Another threat would be wild animals. If you're traveling in the wilderness, there's no established roads, right? There's no paved roads that you can walk down. You're traveling kind of out in the wilderness with a donkey that is food for scavengers, food for predators. I mean, humans are food for predators sometimes. So, or if you were trading like fur or something that would smell like an animal. So you had to deal with these wild beasts, whether it was in the water, having like crocodiles or if you were just kind of traveling out and about and you had coyotes and wolves, um, different birds. So yeah, wild animals and bandits were a big problem. Which leads us into economics. So that should be the end of your politics section. The next section in the notes here is economics. So talking about trade, trade was super important. There is no way any civilization could live 100% on its own. Even uh, civilizations that were hunters and gatherers, so if you think of like some Native American tribes, even those Native American tribes might meet up with other tribes in trade. Right? It's just, it's vital for a civilization to survive. So trade for Mesopotamia was done through a barter system. Okay? So this barter system, and maybe you've heard that word before, barter, if you barter with someone, um, barter, bartering, or a barter system meant that you traded a good or a service for another good and service without the use of money. So there was no money exchange happening, at least not initially. Now, eventually, as the civilizations kind of changed, as people came in and conquered and brought their own traditions with them, trade kind of shifted, but especially initially, right at the beginning, trade was done using a barter system. They would trade one thing for another. So you have corn, I have wheat, I want the, I want the corn, you want the wheat, we would trade. We would make sure we'd have an equal trade there. And it wasn't always just, just goods, sometimes it could be services. Um, so let's say that um, you needed a cart built to, to carry your trade goods, okay? You might pay a person who builds carts with maybe a few hogs from your livestock or maybe some wheat or some dates or something. You would kind of trade one thing for another without using any money, okay? So let's talk about some things that were traded here. In Mesopotamia, they had grain, they had dates, they had cloth. There were lots and lots of other things they had too, but they would trade things like grain, dates, and cloth for things like stone, metal, and lumber. Especially in the southern part of Mesopotamia where it was a lot drier, there weren't a lot of trees. So lumber or wood was important to be able to build homes or to help secure homes or to make carts or different things like that. So lumber was important. They would trade for that. They'd trade for metal. Not all metal could be found in different parts of Mesopotamia. Remember, this is a large area, so lots of things can be traded. Um, stone, metal, lumber, they would get those things because they gave someone else wood, dates, and cloth. Again, there are other things that were traded, but those are just three of them. They might have also traded using boats. So I thought this was a really cool picture, too, um, of an ancient Mesopotamian boat, or what they, assume, what they think, based on artifacts they found, one of those boats might have looked like. So this is very different than the boats that we see today, the big boats with the engine, the steam engines, or regular engines, or even, this isn't even like a, like a paddle boat, okay? So this is a type of boat they might have used to trade those goods with. So lots of trading that would happen there. And that's it, guys. It's a real quick lesson today between economics and politics. So I'm going to let you go. 
um, you need to make sure you have these notes done and take this time now since this is a shorter video take this time to make sure you have all the rest of your slides filled out you should have everything filled out all the way up to this slide here social structure we will do social structure and timelines another day so i'm gonna let you go good luck if you have any questions you know how to get a hold of us see you guys